Hi everybody and welcome to the First Date Under Danger YouTube channel. My name is Nick Schenkeveld and today I want to talk you through um, some scenery, some uh, video content that has been circulating on the internet and especially with uh, law enforcement, special forces, medics, all of them. And it's about the raw body cam video that shows a shootout with an armed robbery suspect outside the Denver 7-Eleven. Well, um, the first thing that I want to say is that I have the absolute most respect for all law enforcement officers all over the world. But I think it's very important that we go to try and, and place it in a right contest, uh, context because um, the video has been showing over and over and over again and, it's, uh, and everybody's sharing the video because they're quite unique it's quite unique footage, but it's very important uh, for us to do something with that uh, footage as well from a learning point of view. And that is why I'm going to do it a little bit different. We're going to watch the, I'm going to watch the, the video contact contents uh, once more. I've already done it a few times, but I'm going to do it now again. And I'm going to point out a few a few points that I see and afterwards I'll gonna do it uh, once again but then we're gonna um, cut some pieces out for us to take a look at and just to see what we can do to learn. The important thing is that we learn from it and I believe that this video will show us a few points for us that we can learn about especially in a tactical situation because is everything that they're doing in the movie the right way? No, it isn't. But it's very important for us to place it in the right context. It is a stressful situation and you have to make des uh, decisions in the blink of an eye. So I, I, know, I know that everybody is doing the best job that they can at the moment. But I believe that it's all, always very important to afterwards try and take a look at the situation and see where we could have done better either in training or in preparation so that is why we're gonna watch the video together now so I'm gonna put it on play and let's start watching it at first there is no sound what are you saying? what are you saying? Yeah. 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 I have an officer hit in the leg. Give me cars here. Code 10. Trap, I got you. I got you. Watch out. So it's good. He's, he's reloading and now his, his colleague, his partner is going to put the tourniquet on. The question is, is this a massive bleeding? Uh, looking at the, the footage that I see now, um, no it isn't. Yeah, it is a bleeding, but it is not a massive bleeding. So a tourniquet should have been should not have been necessary at this moment looking at this situation. Is it understandable? Yes. Because it's a stressful situation, but then it's very important if you start turning the tourniquet, you need to look at the uh, the wound as well because you need to know if your tourniquet is effective. And he's not looking at it at the moment. This is a very good reaction from his partner you, telling him to go back because this is a very stressful situation and he didn't do a complete self check yet because he felt the, the shot going into his leg but it doesn't mean that he didn't got shot anywhere else so it's very important for him to do a self check and he isn't doing that at a moment. Two colleagues uh, are the police officers on the other side are already putting him under... under um, What's that? I bet it did. They already, they already have the situation cleared, so this would be a perfect, perfect moment for them to do self-check. The both of them, the both of them, because they've been in contact. Okay, we're going fast forward to this part because yeah, much crossfire. yeah you, see, you see what he's telling. I got too much cross, crossfire, so that means it, this is a very good opportunity to start doing a self check as well. But for me, it, it goes. It is about the medical. Blanche, you guys got him. 
for me, it's all about the medical points that I want to clear out, not not the technical points. His colleague is already uh, over there because somebody else is shot as well. And if you take a very good look at what he's doing at the moment, it, if you place the tourniquet that tight, it's very hard to walk. And he just walked the entire, the entire end from the 7-Eleven towards there. And I know it doesn't look like that far, but if you have a tourniquet on your leg, it is far. So I really have my doubts on how, how well the tourniquet is fixed on the leg and I have my doubts yeah. if it yeah. was necessary at all. But I know you're good. Sit the fuck down. Okay, and now we see it from the different point of view from Trevor from the sure. officer that got shot. They don't have the tourniquet on uh, on their belt. They have it in, in inside their uh, pocket. The, he asks him to step up his leg. Um, yeah, but he he could have just unwinded the, the tourniquet all the way and then placed it around his leg. Uh, right in front of a silver jeep, he's still moving. Um, my partner's putting my tourniquet on right now, so I'm not able to uh, get him into custody yet. Uh, mark this time for tourniquet time. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward this again. Because I wanna... Okay, he's walking to the other side in just a few seconds. What's that? And well, there's one thing that I want to point out, and then and then we're through Seven looking nine. at it because he will. It's fine, I think. Yeah, there it is. He's doing a, a quick self check, but it's very important to do a self check, right. especially right. after right. a stressful situation like this. And that is what I'm missing in this situation because the boat got. Uh, under fire, one of them got shot, so you need to do your self check. Look for massive bleeding. So that's it. There are a few things we need to address, and um, for the first thing that we need to know that this is in a tactical situation, so that means that you um, need to make decisions in the blink of an eye so that also means that the possibilities of things going not all the way that you want them are okay and looking at the way that they place the tourniquet uh, what is their address to address well actually the question is if we take a look at is this a massive bleeding no it isn't because there is no um, pulsation there is not a lot of blood rushing out. Uh, there is not a pool of blood. There is not somebody that is unconscious within the pool of blood. The clothing isn't all the way soaked with blood. So this isn't a massive bleeding. But it, but it is still very understandable that they place the tourniquet. But then it's very important that the tourniquet, uh, if you place a tourniquet within a care on a fire situation, and this is care on a fire, it means that you place the tourniquet as high as possible and then you need to take the person out of the situation as soon as possible and try to reassess the tourniquet. Is it actually necessary to place the tourniquet? And it isn't. Um, but in a tactical situation it is understandable that you place it because you do not have the time to check out if it is a massive bleeding, yes or no. But is it? Looking at the footage, it isn't. But it's still very understandable why people um, place tourniquets in those kinds of situations. But what we need to say then, that it is very important that the tourniquet gets reassessed as soon as possible. 
what I think is a very good point is that you can't uh, context back in and telling, well, I got shot in the leg, I need an ambulance, so uh, please uh, take note, this is the time of tourniquet placement. Well, we know that we want to have the tourniquet out off somebody's limb within two to three hours so that is the main goal the main purpose of, of being uh, knowing what time the tourniquet is placed so that for the tourniquet placement then the way the tourniquet is placed is it placed as high as possible yes it isn't but nobody um, as far as we can see they're not looking at the wound when they're doing uh, the placement of the tourniquet and that is very important. You need to take a look at the wound to see what is happening because that is the only way for you to know if your tourniquet is effective, yes or no. It's just not turning it around and thinking, well, that should be it and uh, that is it for now. No, you need to check and see if your tourniquet is uh, functional. So that is a very important point that I'm missing at the moment. Placing a tourniquet means reassessing turning until the bleeding has come to a complete halt that is your main purpose and then if you place the tourniquet inside the security buckle reassess again because you're letting go a little bit of tension and that just might be enough for the bleeding to start again so if you decide to place the tourniquet do it the right way that means make sure that you reassess and you check your tourniquet yeah so that is a very important one if you place the tourniquet because that is a point that has that in training people tend to forget why because if we train uh, people often don't have uh, wounds that are bleeding and that is something that we do wrong in our training because we see what happens in the field because then people they just turn but they're not looking at the wound anymore and that is something that I see a lot in a medical training that you uh, in in tourniquet juice especially as soon as there is a technical situation or so stress people tend to forget to take a look at the wound so you do not know if your tourniquet is effective and what else is there to address for us the self-check what I really miss in a technical situation is doing a self-check I'm not telling that where exactly they should do it there are, there are a lot of things happening at the moment so is it understandable that they don't do it right away uh, maybe but if you're standing like there the way that you could do a self-check is keeping your gun pointed towards danger and then do your self-check without losing focus so placing your arm over here and checking it so there is a way to do a self-check without uh, keeping without taking your gun off of uh, the suspect so that is something that law enforcement should be trained in more often and more properly so they know how to do it. We learn a few things and one of the main things that I learned from this movie is that there, for us there is still a, po a lot of possibilities to uh, train better and that means placing more focus on uh, the way to perform a self-check because I believe that is very important but also uh, teaching people that it's very important to know when and when not to place a tourniquet um, and seeing the difference within a tactical situation because this is a tactical situation so it's very uh, plausible that somebody's going to put a tourniquet even if it isn't necessary but then there needs to be a reassess point somewhere and it could be that they leave it for the EMT services because they're well trained and know how to do it um, but it is very important that we comment on that so we can put it into the right perspective um, I think it's very good that we have the opportunity to talk about this and I think it's very good that I have the opportunity to talk with you about it I've seen this movie quite often and um, I just want to put out, uh, get out a few points that I think are very important for you guys as well. Um, so, grabbing it all together, I think that the law enforcement in the videos, video did a great job. And I believe that we still have a lot of possibility to learn and get better. And I believe that this video will help us in doing so. So, I hope that you can appreciate 
the, the, my reaction on the content and I hope that together we can make sure that we can perform even better. So I want to thank you very much all for watching this and I'll see you next week on Monday. So we'll make a video every Monday. So please, if you like this, join and subscribe to my First Aid Under Danger YouTube channel. For now, I want to thank you once again. My name is Nick Schengefeld and don't forget to check our website on firstaidunderdanger.com and I'll hope you join in next week. Thank you very much.